In this video, we're going to talk about the two flower beds that I made for the backyard. Let's get into it. First off, we're building the carcass of these boxes. I marked out the floor to get an idea for where the beds were going to go and how each piece was going to fit into place. This helped reduce the chance of a mistake later in the day. Next, I went through the lumber to get a good idea of the prettiness and the weight of each piece. I wanted the heavy pieces to go on the bottom and wanted to make sure that the pretty stuff stayed facing forward. To remember where each piece goes, I left a little marking to help me later on. F meant front, B meant back, H meant heavy, and an arrow meant this is the nice side. Let's start in this first layer. I chose a back heavy piece to act as my starting place, and another back heavy piece to go against the decking as nobody would be able to see the face of it. After measuring and marking the first piece, it's time to cut the lumber down to size. On an uneven surface, the first layer might rock around a bit because the straight dish wood might not sit well on the floor. If, like me, you're building these on slabs, you can use a bit of chalk on the floor and wiggle the lumber around to see exactly where you need to carve a chunk out. If you're looking to build this on dirt or grass, I'd recommend building a concrete foundation to sit your bed on so it sits better and lives longer. Next, you'll want to cut out channels for water to escape from the box. I didn't do this on the first box, and I suffered for it afterwards when I needed to drill holes at awkward angles. Cut a 1 inch wide groove a couple of inches into the piece, so that any water draining into the inside corners can escape. It's up to you where they go, but for me, the floor tapers towards the fences, so I added my drainage slots pointing that way. I then continue cutting and dry fitting the pieces, ensuring everything is square so any obvious imperfections or miscuts will jump out immediately. All of the cuts for each layer are the same size, so it's quicker and easier to cut it all in bulk as I learned after the first box. These are all the cuts for the next two layers. I had a remarkably small amount of waste from all these cuts. That was intentional, I promise. Once the first layer is cut, it's time to fit it together. The lumber is heavy on its own, so it won't get blown around by the elements, but that doesn't mean it can be loosely fit together. I used some 100mm stainless steel screws to bind the corner joints together. I could have used brackets for a sturdier fit, but I have no intention of moving these, so I only want enough binding to stop the pieces from tipping over. If you need the stability, I'd recommend using metal corner brackets and plenty of screws. The screws go into the wood at a 45 degree angle to get as much grip as we can across both pieces. To make life easier, I suggest making a 45 degree drilling jig to help space and distance the screw pilot holes properly. Don't drill into the end grain of a piece, as this won't bind as well as drilling into the side. Here I'm just drilling in two screws per joint and finishing the first layer. With the first layer done, it's a rinse and repeat for the other two layers, ensuring that you adjust the wood position so that the corners look like giant finger joints. I didn't catch the footage of staining the boxes, but I used Deccan UV protection oil in natural oak colour. I don't know if this is the best thing for the job, but my thinking is if it's good enough for a high foot traffic decking, it's good enough for a flower bed. There's not much to say here, other than you definitely need to do the whole bed, so make sure you do it before you fit the base, and definitely before the lining. If you want a more resilient finish, I'd recommend using paint. With all three layers done, it's time to fit the base. You can do this after the first layer if you want to make it easier, but I figured I'd leave it until all three layers were done so that it all came together nicely. First we need to elevate the base off the floor so that the wood doesn't rot quickly. I put a piece of 2x3 through the table saw to make two 1x3 strips and use those as spaces for the very bottom. 
Once attached, I added a cross beam to break the L shape of the box into two rectangles. This makes adding the slats much easier. Now we measure up the size of the gap from wall to wall and start cutting up as much waste from the shop as we can to fill the base of this box. Looks don't matter here as we're going to fit a layer of plastic over the top anyway, so use the ugliest, nastiest wood that you'd otherwise burn, like the broken down pallets that I had lying around. I didn't screw in these slats because the weight of the dirt would be enough to hold them in place. I didn't get much footage of the last part because it was raining when I did it, so here's some footage of the site manager keeping an eye on the job. The last step was to add pond liner to the box, as you can see on the right. I did this in two pieces rather than trying to do the whole L shape in one big piece. Both pieces were essentially adding a pond liner to each rectangle that I talked about earlier with lots of overlap. If you cut it too close, then dirt is going to escape and it'll get messy over time. To keep the plastic lining looking clean, you'll need to employ your Christmas present wrapping skills and fold these corners in on themselves properly. In short, take the excess fold and tuck it in along the inside of the lining that will be touching the dirt. You'll end up with corners that have a couple of layers of plastic, so make sure you staple them in well. Once it's all stapled in, run a blade around the edge and voila, the flower bed is done. If you like this video, please do the YouTube algorithm thingies to help me out. And feel free to share the video to your fellow woodworkers or green-fingered friends. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time.